Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you about the bone metastasis. Uh, what are the um, options to treat them? Uh, what are the pros and cons? Uh, how can you treat them systemically or destroy them locally? Uh, how can you relieve pain? Because this topic is very important and I often get these questions. So, let's get started. So, bone metastasis is when the tumor uh, spreads to the bones and makes their new growth there. Many tumors love to metastasize to bones, like uh, breast cancer, uh, for example, lung cancer, prostate cancer, uh, stomach cancer, uh, for example, multiple myeloma, and uh, some other tumors, they also sometimes metastasize to the bones. What are the symptoms of such metastasis? It can be asymptomatic or it can cause pain and uh, by the investigations, by the statistics, uh, up to 80% of patients are not treated well for their pain. That's why it's a big and huge problem. Also, uh, of course, the bone with metastasis may be dysfunctional may not uh, be good in bearing the weight and uh, may uh, actually break easily without any trauma or with very minor trauma. Uh, and um, also this metastasis may press uh, the vessels, blood vessels and uh, nerves uh, that are just uh, located nearby, causing different symptoms, symptoms like weakness or tingling or radiating pain that's shooting somewhere in the leg or in the arm, for example, or of course, uh, impairing the blood flow. So what is their official treatment? Of course, first of all, we need to think about pain relief. Uh, how do we do that? We uh, give the medicines, that can be medicines that we take uh, through our mouth or some injection forms. Of course, this pain is often very severe and uh, uh, we often give uh, opiates or narcotic uh, analgetics for these patients. Plus, to improve their efficacy, we can give some adjuvants. What is that? Uh, these are additional painkillers with different mechanisms of actions. For example, um, some drugs that we give just for fever and uh, toothache, like uh, paracetamol or uh, ibuprofen or diclofenac, Ketarolac or others. Plus, we often give the osteoclast inhibitors. Uh, these are the separate group of drugs. Uh, our bone is the um, alive organ. It's not just a stick. It's alive. And um, there are osteoblasts that produce new bones all the time. And there are osteoclasts that resorb this bone. And these uh, processes must be in balance. With this treatment, uh, we give these drugs that will block the bone resorption, so the bone will be only produced. This may actually protect with um, bone destruction by metastasis. Somehow, I don't say totally protect, but it can slow down. Uh, they have some anti-tumor activity, and um, they actually may decrease the pain and uh, the risks of uh, fractures. I'm talking about uh, zoledronic acid, and I'm talking about denosumab. Denosumab is a more modern drug that is uh, more expensive, but uh, it's a little bit more effective than zoledronic acid, and it doesn't uh, affect the kidneys. Uh, some patients who have uh, severe kidney problems uh, shouldn't use the zoledronic acid, uh, but they can use denosumab, for example. Zoledronic acid, on the other hand, uh, is a little bit less effective than denosumab, but it's much cheaper, it's more available, and uh, also um, some clinicians, um, they use it once in three months instead of once in every month. That is also more comfortable for patients. How else can we relieve the pain? If there is one big tumor in the bone that is uh, mostly painful, or that is, well, tumor metastases are not painful, uh, we can use their external beam radiation to affect this tumor. In 60% of patients, uh, it will 
help with their pain, in one quarter it will totally relieve the pain. But it has some issues like toxicity um, because it's um, ionizing radiation and um, it can also affect the skin while the beam is going through the skin. I made a video on uh, radiation dermatitis because uh, this is a common issue. 90% of patients may develop this radiation dermatitis during radiation therapy. And to prevent it or to minimize it or treat it, I made a video radiation dermatitis prevention and treatment on this channel. So it may be very beneficial for those who are about to undergo radiation therapy. Also, as you understand, 40% of patients won't get any relief uh, of pain after this radiation therapy or it can come again, uh, come back, I mean, the pain. And um, then, of course, we can sometimes retreat with radiation therapy, but uh, usually it's less effective and it uh, increases toxicity. That's why. Uh, we have other uh, methods to treat this pain, and these are ablation methods. Just a few words about surgery. Uh, in some patients, when the metastasis is only one, uh, we can use uh, surgery to remove this piece of bone with the goal of potential cure of this patient. Or often we can see the situations when the fracture is impending and it will may cause some uh, big problems for the patient, uh, spinal cord, cord uh, injury, compression, or big uh, blood vessels or ner nerves uh, damage. That's why we always seek for uh, the consultation of orthopedic oncological surgeon who will um, assess the situation and maybe they will do surgery to strengthen this uh, part of the bone or sometimes they put the cement inside to make it stronger. This is called vertebroplasty or kephoplasty. You can see here. And I forgot to tell you that there is one more type of radiation therapy that is not local but systemic. This is called uh, radio, radio nuclide or radioisotope therapy when we inject uh, the radioisotopes that will um, accumulate mostly in bones and they will produce, the release the ionizing radiation. They can inject radium that will produce the alpha particles. Uh, these are better because they don't fly so far as beta particles and um, they have less toxicity and more efficacy. And also there are some strontium or samarium uh, that um, have better particles and they um, go a little bit further and they are more prone to cause toxicity to bone marrow and uh, for patients in whom the bone marrow is already tired of chemotherapy, for example, and they already have low uh, erythrocytes, red blood cells or uh, white blood cells, leukocytes, then it may be a real issue. So alpha particles like radium are um, a little bit safer. And also alpha particles, they prolong survival of such patients versus beta particles. And of course, radionuclide therapy is for those patients who have a lot of metastasis, not only one. If they have one, they use external beam radiation, focused radiation. So we have big metastasis or not very big, but painful. We want to do something with it. Radiation therapy is not working. What else can we do? We can use ablation techniques. Uh, most of them uh, are not done quite fast. Uh, you can uh, put some needles, electrodes, antennas inside the tumor to uh, heat it up or cool it down and destroy it. For example, radio frequency ablation, they put electrodes inside the tumor and it will produce high frequency waves that will heat up the tumor around this tip of this um, electrode. It's fast, it's effective, it's cheap. Uh, but uh, the zone around is difficult to monitor and it can be the uh, not very round shape and it may actually produce some uh, damage to surrounding um, tissues, uh, surrounding structures and it's, uh, it has a lot of uh, pain during or after procedure. It can be used if uh, the metastases are not very abundant, if the pain is intense, if there is a good access to place this uh, electrode and of course patient mostly needs general anesthesia that's why um, the patients that can tolerate this general anesthesia not very uh, weak 
and don't have very severe uh, comorbid conditions. Next method is cryoablation. Uh, that's when you put these tubes inside the tumor. First, you put ergon gas to cool it down, to freeze it, and then you put helium to heat it up. And then again, it will produce freezing and freezing. The crystals will be formed. They will damage the uh, membranes of the cells. The cells will die. It will make a frozen ice globe there, and uh, the metastasis will die eventually. It's easy to monitor, less pain, it can be used for bigger lesions, uh, and uh, unfortunately, it's quite expensive. There is one very great method, is uh, ultrasound, uh, high intensity focus ultrasound waves. The good thing is you don't need even to put any needles, you don't need to put anything inside, you do it just in, on surface, but it's expensive and uh, not for deep tumors. And you need to have a good access so this ultrasound doesn't go through the important structures. There is also microwave ablation. It looks uh, like uh, radio frequency ablation, but better controlled uh, field area is more round and uh, more effective tumor destruction. You can put several antennas, you can use it for bigger metastasis, but not used for spinal metastasis. And one more, if of course, a uh, nano knife where you put several uh, electrodes and it, they make the electric field uh, between them. It's very well controlled. It doesn't go anywhere around, does not destroy any tissues around, and uh, you can effectively uh, destroy the tumor or metastasis, but uh, the problem is very expensive nowadays. Dear friends, that's all on official methods, on official medicine. Uh, don't forget that any systemic treatment, like for example, chemotherapy, may uh, also heal the metastasis. Uh, in some patients, you can see the total disappearance of tumor after chemotherapy, and even you still can see these lesions in the spine or in the other bones after chemotherapy. Uh, but they may not be alive, actually, because these are lesions where the bone is already destroyed, and you will see them, but they, will not, they won't be metabolically active. And there are really a lot of situations like that. Afterwards, they will be replaced by sclerotic tissue. It's like scar tissue, uh, and you will still see the lesions there. And also, you must understand that uh, these methods are mostly just for palliation, just to relieve the symptoms, relieve the pain, some uh, improve the survival, the life expectancy, but unfortunately, they don't cure the patients. That's why uh, the patient with uh, bone metastasis uh, should, as for me, seek for some other adjunctive types of treatments to work with the immunity, for example, medicinal mushrooms, or to consider other uh, theories, at least to study them. I have a playlist on the mitochondrial metabolic theory of cancer, on uh, keto diet, on glutamine. This is not official, this uh, is not in protocols, but it has a lot of um, scientific data already. That's why please watch these videos on my channel. Thanks for those who are who is supporting the channel. And please remember that every patient, every person uh, always has chance to be cured, totally cured. But all the tumors are different, all the patients are different, and there is no single remedy that can help everyone. In every situation, different things help. And we cannot always find what combination will be effective in this patient or the other one. But there are a lot of cases where we see that the patient changes his lifestyle, changes his type of, um, for example, his diet, starts to take some supplements and he's completely healed. That's why there is always chance to be cured. I wish you a good day. God bless you. Good luck and goodbye. Don't be afraid.